Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for January 11, 2016. This is week two of this new series for this new year. The series is entitled Refined Focus, and today's message is entitled Every Thought. This message is coming from a passage I shared with you last week. I trust that last week, the first week of messages for the new year was a blessing to you, and I'm excited to continue to flow in this same vein. The passage I'm talking about is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, and we're going to spend some time in this passage. It's going to take weeks to get through these you know, few verses. But he, this is what the Apostle Paul said, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare, not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. That's what I'm going to focus on today. Just those words. Every thought. He's painting a picture of this war that's going on. And then he tells us that it is so important that we have to take every thought captive. What does this mean to you today? I actually have 10 nuggets to share with you. Uh, so open your heart to receive. Number one, Paul teaches us that every believer is in a war. If you're born again, listen, you are in a war. No believer is exonerated. No godly soldier gets to remain on the sidelines. We war, but we do not war after the flesh. We do not war after the natural. This is not a natural fight. But while our war is a spiritual war, it is waged on the battleground of the mind, which is natural. So that's weird, right? Because our mind is natural, is part of us down here in the earth, in this realm. But Paul is saying that there is a spiritual war going on in our natural mind. So there is a spiritual war being waged in our natural mind. Number two, while Jesus won the overall war, because some might be saying, hold on, Rick, what are you talking about war? There's no war. Jesus already won. He suffered. He bled. He died. He rose and he conquered Satan, hell and the grave forever. I got it. That is true. Jesus did do that. He won the overall war. But watch this. Even though he conquered Satan, hell and the grave, even though he already won, there are individual battles going on every day. <clears throat> battles for what? Battles for your soul and your success. And that those battles are being waged on the battle within the battleground of your mind. So, yes, Jesus won the overall war. Right. And so, yes, he conquered Satan, hell and the grave, and he offers salvation freely to everyone who would accept him. But there are individual battles going on. These little wars for you. There's a war for me. And, and that war is being waged in our mind. And that war is all about our soul and our success. Number three, the mind your mind, my mind, is the arena of faith where the battle for control of your life is fought every day. There is an arena of faith where there's a battle being waged every day. That's the mind, and this is the battle for control of your life. Number four, your mind is the control center of your life. That's why. That's why the battle is going on there. In your mind, you choose to either follow God or follow Satan or follow selfish desires, you choose and your decisions lead to your actions. So you choose and your mind, everything is going on in your mind and, and whatever you choose in your mind winds up manifesting in the actions that you take. Number five, one thought from Satan <coughs> can not only distract you, a thought comes from Satan not only to distract you, but ultimately it comes to derail you. Satan wants to de distract you, yes, but ultimately he wants to derail you from your destiny. He wants to knock you off the course of the path that God has established for you from the foundations of the world. God wants you to bind your feet to that path and to walk down the path to your overall, his overall destination for your life so that you can become the man, the woman that God has called and destined and designed and desires for you to be. But then Satan wants to knock you off that path. He wants to not only only just distract you, but ultimately he wants to derail you. Uh, number six. Now, if one thought can do all of that, watch this. Number six, 
Continuous thoughts from Satan. And this is where we dealt with strongholds, right? Continuous thoughts from Satan, if allowed to flow into your mind unchecked, if you don't do anything about it, then they can lead to feelings of failure, discontent, dejection, and ultimately even depression. And depression is dangerous. Yes, you can be born again, covered by the blood, filled with the spirit, called according to the plans and the purposes of God and be depressed. You can be, you can be called, appointed and anointed and be depressed. Why? Because you don't take control of your thoughts. This is why every thought is important. There are born again believers who are struggling and battling depression and feelings of dejection because they are not taking control of their thoughts. You are in a battle. You are a soldier. You got to have a soldier mindset. Rise up. Take control of your mind. Take control of your thoughts. Make 2016 the best year of your life by the grace of God. But you are going to have to focus this is a year of refined focus for us. But just like one thought from the enemy can derail you, one thought from the enemy can distract you. Watch this. Number seven, one thought from God, glory to God, just one thought from God can turn any seemingly hopeless situation around. One thought from God. Number eight, one thought from God can give you the idea you need to change your financial future. Just one thought from God can lead to that business. One thought from God can lead to that book. One thought from God can lead to that project that would change your financial future forever. Number nine, never underestimate the power of one thought. Thoughts lead to images. Thoughts and images lead to decisions. Decisions lead to actions. Actions lead to habits and habits ultimately form your character. All of that starts with one thought. Number 10. And finally, thoughts are so important that God taught us to take every thought captive. Now, this is the Bible we're reading. Yes, Paul wrote it, but the Holy Spirit inspired it. The Holy Spirit, God himself taught us to take every thought captive and bring it under the obedience of Christ. If your thoughts are that important to God, then they ought to be that important to you. So let's close this out with a declaration of faith. Speak this over your life from a believing heart. Repeat after me. Say, Father, this is a season of refined focus for me. I enter this day more aware of my thoughts. My thoughts are important to you. Therefore, I declare that they are important to me. I read your word daily. I get so much word down in my heart that it literally renews my mind. I think the way you think. I am deprogrammed from my old thinking and reprogrammed to think like you. As my mind is renewed and I think like you every day, the thoughts that are not like you stick out like a sore thumb. Thoughts of doubt, fear, and failure are quickly identified. And as they are, I take them captive. By your grace, I am able to take control of every thought. My mind is fixed and focused on you and on the purpose you sent me into the earth to accomplish. By living this way, living with refined focus, I am positive that 2016 will be the best year of my life. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Look on the right hand side of the website. Sign up. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, just remember every thought is important to God. Therefore, every thought should be important to you. God bless you.